Okay, we have started. Hello everyone. I'm going to just wait a couple of minutes, um, waiting for our guests to join. I'm actually pretty excited because today we are launching our series, That is Why Italy, uh, a series entirely dedicated to uh, Indian students which are currently studying in Italy. Uh, we have today uh, a student, uh, Rauf Mastan, who is currently studying at University of Messina. Um, I'm just waiting for him to join. Hello everyone. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Hello, Rauf. Nice to see you again. How are you? I think there is a connection issue. Buongiorno. I think that our guest had a connection issue, but I'm sure that he will, uh, he will solve the problem soon. Let's see. Here we are. Am I audible? You are perfectly audible, Ralph. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> so there in Italy, I would, I would say good morning, since it's 11.30 in Italy at the moment. I think it's coffee time. Uh, yes, yes, actually, it's break. We have a break right now. It's exactly, it's coffee time. <laughs> it's coffee time. It's espresso time. Okay, so um, let me introduce you, first of all. So as I was saying today, we are launching That Is Why Italy, which is a, a series dedicated to uh, Indian students who are currently studying uh, in Italy. And today we are starting this first episode with you, with Rauf, who is currently attending his fourth year of uh, medicine and surgery at the University of Messina, which is a beautiful uh, city located in Sicily. Um, so, Rauf, uh, let's start from the very beginning, okay? okay. Um, how come Italy? How did you end it? Uh, how come you chose Italy as your study abroad destination country and specifically why Messina? Okay. Uh, to begin with, again, for all of those who don't know me, I'm a Rauf. I study, like uh, Ms. Federica just said, I study fourth year of medicine and surgery. I graduated from high school in 2018 from uh, Aligarh Muslim University in India. And like we all know, the medical entrance exam in India isn't the easiest to crack. And so I had to have a plan B. So my, I looked around all over the world to figure out my second option. And I stumbled upon Italy. And I saw the wonderful education system. I saw the way the, way the system was designed. And right now, I can tell you the way I experienced it is exactly how I figured it out in 2018. And to answer your second question, uh, Messina. So to be very honest with all of you, my first choice was the University of Pavia. Uh, but then, due to the IMAT rankings, I couldn't make it. And thereby, Messina had the seats, and they chose to accept me as one of their students in 2018. And I enrolled as one of the first medical students at this university for the course that is taught in English. Okay, so when you reached Messina, there weren't a lot of uh, international students there uh, uh, attending the, um, the classes. So I think it's Actually, was quite, no, like uh, when uh, we got mm -hmm. here, like I just said that we were the first batch of international students to study medicine. But the year before, 2017, was the first batch in which Unime ever recruited any international student. Uh, when I got here, it was about 
50 to 60 international students. So being here okay. for the past four years, I've seen the university actually grow in number. Right now, we are about 700 to 800 international students. Wow. We have about 10 international courses. We launched two more courses this year, which are civil engineering and masters in data science. And next year, we plan on launching more and more courses and to grow as an international community. Thank you for specifying this, because of course the students that are attending this session may not know that at Messina we have not only medicine and surgery, but a, a, a wide range of courses um, from international management to banking, finance, and so on. So data science, science, so and bachelor's, of course, master degree programs, and also vocational uh, one-year courses. So there is quite the... Uh, we uh, have four bachelor's courses right now, one single cycle, which is medicine and surgery, and seven master's courses, and we added two more courses this year. And next year, we plan on increasing in number. That's true. Okay. So tell me, when you arrived uh, in Messina, you had, of course, you had to find an accommodation. How did you manage to find one? Did you have the, did you avail the support of the international student uh, uh, welcoming desk? Uh, how, how did you manage with the accommodation? So when we first got here, we were told by the international department, uh, for the visa application process, we needed to, to prove that we have accommodation settled for one month. Mm -hmm. So what I did was personally, I booked an Airbnb. And okay. also due to the fact that this was around November, which is after the scholarship applications for ERSU, which for the scholarships are kind of done. So it was too late to apply for me. So I had to book an Airbnb. And once I got there, we spoke to the International Students Desk. They were kind enough to guide us exactly on what websites we need to look at. They gave us names of agencies in which we could look for apartments. And ultimately after about two to three days of searching, uh, we found a very good apartment, which I still live in. So it's been, it's been four years. And you're sharing the flat with other international students, Italians, who are you sharing the flat with? No, I, I share the flat with two Italian students. One okay. studies economics, the other studies law. And they're from Sicily and a neighboring region called Calabria. Uh, very Amazing. friendly people, they, they, they help me learn the language. Very kind <laughs> and uh, it's very important actually, I would advise all of you once you get to Italy. I'm not saying if, when you get to Italy, because all of you, I hope, all, my, all the audience watching today ultimately registers and come to Italy and better Messina, because you'll have the pleasure of enjoying the Sicilian uh, culture, which we'll get to in a bit. But I would suggest all of you to interact as much as you can with locals, because in the south of Italy, uh, Sicily especially, we not we, I mean the Italians, they, they prioritize culture a lot and they take pride in integrating you with their culture, which is something that I've had the luxury of experiencing in the city. I would love to hear you say something in Sicilian dialect. You cannot even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, Sicilian dialect, most things I know are not very appropriate to use in this life because that's the most common used dialect words here. So <laughs> I would suggest all of you come and experience it here yourself. Okay, this will leave it. I'll call you later on the phone. You will tell me something in Sicilian. Okay, we'll do it like that. So tell me, since you have mentioned ERSU uh, scholarship, I believe that many students that are attending this session have never heard about it, or maybe they have, but they don't know what we are talking about. Can we please, uh, can you please give them some more information? So ERSU, what we know is that ERSU is a regional scholarship uh, program for uh, Sicily region, of course, which provides um, grants to not only inter Italian students, but also international students, and also helps with accommodation. So as far as I understood, the first year you weren't eligible um, to apply, you arrived too late, but the second year you applied, and what happened? What, uh, how did they support you? So like you correct, correctly stated, the way scholarships work in Italy is, it's not directly provided by the university, Instead, every state in Italy has their own regional scholarship agency. So in the state that Messina is, it's called ERSU, so ERSU Messina. They provide grants, they provide scholarships in terms of pocket money, in terms of food, and also, like you correctly stated, accommodation. So generally, the scholarships for first-year students are based on just two criteria, the course you choose 
and your family income equivalency certificate. So this, uh, we'll get to the technicalities in a bit, but uh, actually, if all of you were to follow our page, Unim Ambassador, we post usually information about the scholarship. We've written a blog on it. I would suggest all of you look at it. But right now, to make the long story short, if you win a scholarship, you get three things. You get two free meals a day. You get accommodation in a residence close to your department. So we have four residences in the city corresponding to four major departments that are spread all over the city. And most importantly, you get about, to be exact, you get 2,700 euros as pocket money that are split in two installments. The first installment you get 40%. And if you have gained the required credits by passing the exams, you get the rest 60%. So okay. again, long story short, you get accommodation, food, and pocket money if and when you apply, and you're in the graduatory, in the list of students that win the application, to win the scholarship. Okay, so it's, it's, it's an income-based scholarship for the first, uh, for the first uh, year, and then of course it's based on merit, because if you haven't achieved any credits, you will definitely not be allowed to receive the grant. Okay, however, it's a great opportunity for you also. I would really consider it's it. definitely, and like all we have to do is study, which is why we get here. So like we said, first it is based on income. You need to prove your family income and make a document, which is very easy when you get here. You'll find more information in the bureaucracy section of our blogs. But from the second year onwards, it's based on income and merit. And as long as you pass your exams, gain those credits, I do not see why you would ever be refused a scholarship. So it's that easy to get a scholarship in the city. Thank you, Rauf. So um, now you, as we said, you are now attending your fourth year of studies and you have two, two more years to go because the medicine and surgery course has a duration of six years. So I, the next two questions I have for you will be one on the past and one on the future. The first one regarding the past, how would you um, evaluate uh, your academic path um, what are your considerations regarding um, the, 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 the level of the professors, the, also the English communication, okay, of the, of the courses? How would you, what is really, really from, 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 from you, what is your evaluation about the academic uh, uh, path that you had? Okay, so personally, like, because I study medicine and surgery, I'm going to explain my personal experience. And I have spoken to other students from other international courses, and I could share some of their experience as well, but starting with me, the way our course was designed, and again, we were the first batch of international students to enroll in medicine and surgery in the city. So first of all, the way the course is structured is it's a six-year course. The first two years are based on theory, and third year onwards, it is, made, it is a hybrid of both, theoretical and practical. We get to visit departments, we get to speak to patients. So right now I'm in the fourth year, so I've experienced a bit of both. So first of all, when I first got here, I was genuinely impressed because like it or not, there are certain stereotypes surrounding the city. But when I first got in here, we were greeted very well by the professors. The level of education here is something that I, it's been four years here and I have every reason to believe that it is of a world-class quality in which uh, we have professors that are experts in their fields. They genuinely care about the students. And some even take time off of normal, regular days in order to help students study for exams, to give them opportunities. Not only do they teach what is necessary academically, but also provide opportunities for the future. They show us their, their own personal research. They connect us with other reputable professors of other major institutes. We have visiting professors from Howard, MIT, often, because our professors have a very good reputation in other universities. And third year onwards, when we started going to the departments in the hospital, at the university hospital, there is good equipment. We get mm -hmm. to interact with patients. And I've been to many operating rooms in my life. And the one, of, one that impressed me the most was like, we have a lot of high tech quality technicians and also equipment. I don't know if all of you have heard of the Da Vinci operating system. It is completely automated. It's basically the, apparently the machine that will bring surgeons out of their jobs. So it is completely automated. And we have two of those in the city. 
and I could this list could last long on why I personally look. I have no reason to lie. No, but we can I definitely feel the passion that you have. So it's uh, I mean whatever you say is confirmed by how you say it. So it's my personal experience, mm -hmm. and I hope that all of you, when you get here, you also have similar experience, if not better, because from the time I got here and the way it is today, there has been a lot of improvement because right now, we, when we first enrolled, we were 32 students. And now in medicine, we're about 250. And we have an increase in quantity and also quality. And as we students are growing, the professors are learning. The professors themselves are, by experience, because I believe experience is the best teacher. With experience, we the uh, the University of Messina is actually could be one of the best destinations to study in Italy, if not Europe, because you combine this good level of education and with the Sicilian culture, it's an experience worth living, in my opinion. I must say that uh, I totally agree with you, since I'm half Sicilian and I'm pretty much homesick at the moment. So yes, Sicily is the best please, uh, please do visit location. It's one of the best locations to visit, definitely. <laughs> so this, the beautiful environment uh, definitely helps. Um, so now we've touched the past, but what about the future? You have two years, uh, two more years to go. I believe that you have started to think of what you will do later on. Uh, so are you going to stay in Italy? or you're going to uh, go somewhere else. And in case, in case you are, can you tell us something about the recognition of your degree abroad? Exactly, that's what I was getting at. So, uh, once you graduate in this university, the, you automatically qualify for a general practitioner's license, which gives you the permission to practice as a general practitioner. And we all know how a GP works. But this degree also qualifies the students that graduate for a possibility to enroll in PhD programs. So we can specialize in a particular uh, field and also gain a doctoral uh, degree, which allows you to practice as a professor, for example. But it also allows you to sit in the specialization exams. Like we have an entrance exam in Italy that allows you entry to specialization schools in a uh, department of your choice. And the technicalities of that is something that we need to decide at least by the fifth year on the, the passion that you have for the department you have if you need to specialize in a particular field. Uh, but it also allows you to enroll in a variety of different courses, like you can enroll in humanitarian causes like UNICEF, like the World Health Organization. Our license is valid all over Europe. And it also allows us to sit the USMLA exam if you need to move to the US. We also directly have access to Middle Eastern countries. We just need to sit their, their entrance exams for qualification, their equivalence exams. But our degree is versatile in around the world, like in Europe mostly, but around the world is an acceptable and reputable degree. And in India, we, to be specific, we have to sit the exam called NEXT, mm -hmm. uh, in which if we pass, we get to practice as a doctor in India. It's that simple. Okay. But you have an answer to one to one question. What are you yes. going to do? <laughs> my personal, my personal I'm very thing. Curious. I plan, I'm sorry. Yes, my personal uh, thing is depends on my specialty. I intend to specialize in oncology, and Messina has a very good center of oncology. So I plan on uh, attending the specialization exam for oncology, and hopefully stay in Messina for a couple of years, and at the same time probably do a PhD with a professor in Germany. So a degree here allows you to do double degrees as well. You can specialize in one course while doing a PhD in another course. So the university itself offers you grants to do hybrid activities at the same time, which is an opportunity which is very rare in other universities around the world. So which gives you an edge over, let's say, the competition. And I really wish you all the best, uh, the best of luck for your future. <laughs> So let's now switch to the practical aspects of the application process. Okay, so as we mentioned at the beginning of this session, Messina doesn't have only medicine and surgery, but a wide range of courses facing, uh, touching all the, all, the, all the subjects from international management, banking, finance, and so on. 
Um, however, uh, you have passed uh, an, an entrance test, which is called IMAT. Okay, it's the it's a medical is the medical test in order uh, which is necessary to have access to an Italian uh, university. Uh, could you give us in details an explanation of the process? Um, also regarding other other courses, I know that you're aware also about the application process of other courses at Messina. Sure, sure. So generally for all students that intend to enroll at the University of Messina, the first step is to undergo what's called a pre-evaluation application, which started at this university on the 1st of February. Uh, if you go, if you intend on enrolling in Messina and haven't pre-evaluated your application yet, all you have to do is go to the link in our bio of Unim Ambassador, you will find the portal, applica applicant portal. And we also have a video that we launched two weeks ago that shows you exactly step by step. I made it myself along with my team. Step by step on how you have to pre-evaluate at the University of Messina, the documents required, and why you need those documents. So this is the first step, pre-evaluation. This are for all courses. So regardless of medicine or not. So we have 12 courses, all 12 courses, all students have to pre-evaluate themselves. The second step is once you've received a pre-acceptance letter from the university after pre-evaluation. Like I know these are a lot of tough terms. So we will explain like all of you students, if you need assistance, all you have to do is talk to our ambassadors to be specific at UNIMED in gen the University of Messina. But in general, if you need any kinds of assistance in these steps that I'm going to mention now, do contact this official agency of, the, uh, of Italy called Unitalia, which is whom I'm talking to right now. And I think they are the best source to give any sort of guidance, any sort of guidance regarding, I understand these bureaucratic processes might be a bit cumbersome and a lot of big words, pre-evaluation, pre-acceptance, pre-enrollment. It might not be, you need to get used to these terms. And I myself from experience, know it's not the easiest thing to do. Of course you can, do it by, all by yourself. But Unitalia is the official source of information for all things related to what I'm gonna talk about. So going back to what I was saying, the first step is pre-evaluation. The next step is pre-enrollment. And this is not for medicine. This, in medicine, the second step is to do what is called an IMAT entrance exam. This exam is held by Cambridge in which they judge you on four major topics. So which is logical reasoning and uh, general reasoning and logical thinking. Then we have general knowledge. We have science. Under science, you have physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology. Biology, you have about 18 questions. Physi I'm not getting to the technicalities, but just to give you an idea. So 18 questions in bio, 12 in chemistry, and eight questions, physics and mathematics combined. And the rest, 22 questions, are from general knowledge and logical reasoning. And this is out of 90. One, if, and depends from university to university, what's the minimum requirement. To give you an idea, last year, our minimum score was about 37.6, which is a very good score. And this minimum score generally indicates the quality of education and the competition that it takes for a particular university. So we've had a very high cutoff. And for those of you intending to apply in Messina, if you think that you're a good student and can definitely crack this exam, I would suggest you opt for Messina because it's a very good university in my personal experience. So once you've pre-enrolled, you get, okay, so you passed IMAT. The next step is to carry out what's called a pre-enrollment application. And this can be done via a website called universeitaly.it. There is a section on the right-hand side that says pre-enrollment. You have to fill in the documents, submit the application, and this application goes to the university as well as the embassy under which your jurisdiction. So specifically for India, we can talk about if you're from the north, I don't know exactly what states fall under which embassy or consular jurisdiction, but we have Delhi, Mumbai, and Kolkata. So based on your state, your application will be sent to one of these, either embassy or two consulates, and then your application will be processed. And if positively evaluated, you'll be issued a visa if you submit the correct documents, of course. And one of these important documents that you need to submit is known as a DOV, which is generally made by the embassy or consulate. And this document basically states 
what your educational qualification of India is worth in Italy. Because in Italy, to enter university, you need to have minimum 12 years of education, of schooling education. And this document is an official document that legalizes and states this. And I'm sure when Italia is the best source to get any kind of information regarding this particular process. Am I right? Thank you, thank you, Raul. Because from my experience. <laughs> no, 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 it's... Uh... Yes, I mean, uh, what is amazing here is that we have also um, your association, which is actually in Italy, in Messina. So what is uh, the, the, the benefit for all students applying Messina is that the, once they arrive in Italy, they know who to count on. And that is extremely important because I constantly receive a lot of calls from students all around Italy that... Uh, don't know where to go, don't know what to do once they have, uh, once they have landed. So having you as a, as a supporter over there is actually, um, it's actually great. So to summarize all the information that you have been giving us, so of course this live is going to stay on our social media, so whenever a student wants to go through the, the steps, they can do it at any time. But just to summarize, there are three things to do. Okay, there is the three, let's say three application steps. The first application is the one sent to the university through the portal, through the university website, I would say. Second step is the pre-enrollment. Third step is the visa. So you just have to remember these three steps. Okay, um, one other thing, call for application for all of you is open at Messina. So you can start sending and submitting your application to the course you wish to apply for. I don't know if there are any limits in courses. Do they, can the students apply for as many courses as they want? Or is there a, a two maximum? Courses. We can apply two for courses. two courses. Okay, so you can pick two courses among the ones that they have on their website. The English, we are obviously speaking about English taught program, so entirely taught in English, okay? There is no Italian, so you have nothing to worry about. Um, so you can pick two courses, start submitting your application now. I think that the uh, deadline for the application is 1st of June, if I'm not wrong, except medicine and surgery. So yes, you can start, the, the sooner you June, start. not decided yet. Yeah. So the sooner you start applying, the better it is, because then you have time to do all the rest. There is a lot of paperwork to do. Okay, we don't want to scare you, but it's better to avoid last minute uh, application, last minute confusion, because at that time it's a peak season and all the students are applying, and it can be a little bit uh, complicated at that, at that moment. Another uh, thing that I wanted to uh, speak about with you, um, where to practice? So let's say that a student wants to apply for medicine and surgery. Do you have any tips uh, regarding the exam. So this is one of the questions that the students were, were, were asking me. How can we start getting prepared for the IMAT? Okay. So to prepare for medicine, the entrance exam, like I stated, there are two major sections in IMAT. One is logical reasoning and general knowledge. The other section is science. So for science, my personal belief is the education system that we have in India, if you did physics, chemistry, biology, in grade 11 and 12, and you have studied it thoroughly, and you have also studied for NEET. Uh, of course, I, and I assume all of, you know, all of you know what NEET is because we all have to pass it. It's the national exam in India. And that level of physics, chemistry, and biology is more than enough. I would personally suggest to study for IMAT. You do not have to worry about the science part. Regarding logical reasoning and uh, general knowledge. General knowledge is something that we do not have a syllabus for because it can be anything and everything, but ma the majority of questions that come in general knowledge are of European history, Italian history. We have Italian bureaucracy on how the government is structured. We have art history, which a lot of questions generally pop up in this arena. And uh, okay, I see a question setting which textbooks to use. Exactly, I was okay, noting that's that a very down. good question. Mm -hmm. Uh, for general knowledge, for logical reasoning, there is Cambridge critical thinking. Please remember this, Cambridge critical thinking. And if you need any information, like you can reach out to our ambassadors. You can text us on Instagram, on Unim Ambassador, and we will redirect you to one of our ambassadors who will give you a list of all the books that you need for IMAT.
because right now at this live I'm not able to list every single book and I do not think it will be effective. So for information regarding textbooks, please text us on Unim Ambassador and we'll get back to you as soon as we can with accurate information. And, okay. Uh, so for physics, chemistry, biology, you can use your NCRT books. Or if you want to prepare more and thoroughly, you can also use Cambridge's A-level or AS-level physics, chemistry, and biology. For math, it's basically 10th grade level math. It's not that hard. You get two to three questions. And uh, generally, if you have a good mathematic basis up to 10th grade, I do not think IMAT is going to be difficult in this particular field. What I would <laughs> suggest to prepare for IMAT is practice. Like you can study the theory all along, but you need to practice using question papers, past question papers of the past 11 to 12 years. You also should generally focus on using BMAT guidance books. So BMAT is the entrance used in the UK, and they have a lot of comprehensive guides with a lot of questions, which are in a similar pattern to that that shows in IMAT. So if you practice, if you practice well, I think IMAT is going to be a cakewalk for you. However, as you said before, they can get in touch with you at any time regarding application process. So I think that they are covered with everything because application process, you are there. Uh, we as Unitalia are here in Mumbai and we are assisting students with the entire bureaucratic paperwork uh, for the visa application and uh, whatever needs to be done here in India can be done through us. Please uh, uh, always refer to official sources of information. Uh, there is a lot of false, um, I've seen a lot of false information on the, on the net. Uh, always refer to these two people that you see here and uh, not to other random uh, consultancy uh, agency um, on the net. Um, one more thing, Rauf, which is uh, quite important, I guess. Um, can you tell us more about what you are doing in Messina? I'm so, this, we had a wonderful talk yesterday and I was so impressed by all the activities that you're having there. So please share it with all of us. It's, it's amazing. So basically, uh, after four years of living in Messina, I thought that the best way for students to receive guidance is through official sources mm -hmm. like you suggested. So what we did is me, with the help of the International Department of the University and the brilliant team that we have, we started what's called the ONIME Student Ambassador Program. So basically we as ambassadors, we represent everything that ONIME has to offer. So basically I say ONIME, which is the Italian way of saying University of Messina, guys. I hope you understand that. So the ONIME Student Ambassador Program basically represents everything that the University of Messina has to offer be it academic processes, academic information regarding the courses, or bureaucratic processes, which can be a bit daunting, or extracurricular activities. So what we do mostly is we promote our courses. We also help in the reception and integration of students. So let's say a student right now is in India. They're just a prospective student. They're deciding, okay, I'm going to enroll at the University of Messina. At this point, they can reach us to get all sorts of information regarding their course of choice. So if they're interested in studying medicine, they can contact one of our ambassadors and get all information they need about medicine. And then this, this student, thank God, passed SIMAT, and then now is an enrolling student of the University of Messina. At this point, this student falls under our reception umbrella. So the student can again contact our ambassadors that I'll be arriving in Messina on this, this date, please let me know what to do. Simple question. We will guide you on everything that you need to do. So from a prospective student, you became an enrolled student. And now, once you are in Messina, we will help you integrate at the University of Messina and also the city of Messina, which you need to be shown around because the first time can be a bit daunting for anybody in any city in the world. So we help in the reception of students. And once you're here, we also help in your retention. So we keep you in the city. We organize cultural activities according to your own culture or other cultures, which is very important. So throughout your entire stay at this university, from the time you are a prospective student up until the time you graduate, you will be completely taken care of. And this is the simplest way I could explain what we do. That is beautiful, Raouf. I myself have been a, 
I was a student who had studied abroad and I know how important it is to find someone uh, other students taking care so so that's extremely important we had um a question from a student asking if delhi was the only place where they could pass their uh, imat in india Current, currently yes currently delhi is the only place and i strongly suggest all the students to book the slot as soon as they open because last year they due to the huge number of requests they ran out of uh, places uh, i think uh, after only one day or two so stay there and at the moment they open the um, the imat booking just book your slot um where did you take your test uh, rauf was it in delhi or you went somewhere else you flew to uh, to messina or to other countries uh, because no, there no, is no, also I in, I, when i gave the test in 2018 it was held in gurgaon Okay. So I give I give it in India in Gurugram. Okay, right you get it. They move the center to Delhi. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think we are done. I don't know if you want to add anything else. I have touched all the most important things I wanted to ask you, but of course if you want to add anything else, uh, you can. Otherwise, I will definitely organize another live with you uh, to know what are the updates because uh, I am very very interested in knowing what you're going to do at the end of the story. So definitely so as to conclude like uh, Ms. Federica said earlier, please refer to only official sources of information. So for regarding all your application even if you choose not to enroll in Messina for other universities as well, Unitalia is the source of information. If you want to enroll at the University of Messina, you also have an added benefit of gaining official information from the Uni Ambassador program. You will get accurate information and and what is very important at this stage is that you get the right information at the right time, which is something that we try our best to do and this comes directly from student to student. So you can trust us because once you get here, we'll help you as students. The University Administration in Italia will help you up until the moment you get here. and we are part of the university administration as well but we are a student division so it's a bit more friendly less less formal we can meet less after five we can meet before seven <laughs> there are no time uh, time restrictions here so please refer to us for sources and i wish you best of luck and if you need anything i hope you know where to reach us on italia at india and on the ambassador on instagram and facebook so i'll definitely leave all the links uh, here in the um, on the when i'll save the, the live and i'll leave all the links uh, also your contact details the call for application deadline make sure to respect the deadlines and yes hurry up if you're interested in studying in messina this is the time thank you rauf and hope thank to hear you from you soon have a good day bye you too bye